continue from where we left off in the previous one so in this one we are looking specifically at steps 31 and we are going to work our way to step 40. all right so let's start with step 31. so although it's not like a requirement for label element with nested inputs we know that it's still best practice to explicitly link the label with the corresponding input element okay so for each of our four labels we want to add a four attributes okay and the value of the four attributes is going to be similar to the value of the corresponding id of the input so for example the first one is going to have a four attribute with this value and we want to do the same thing for the remaining three label elements okay so take note of the changes that i am making okay a1 and finally the last label element okay so the next thing we want to do is to give the label element text such that the input comes before the text okay so we don't want a situation where the text will come before the input we want a situation where the text comes after the input so uh, we say so for example we have this true here and then we give it a value of true so that's for the first one so the second one i've already written true so we'll give it a value we'll give the input a value of uh not true false the second one will be false and then for the third one we give it a text true and then the value is also going to be true finally for the fourth one we give it a value of uh, false okay now our code pass so for 33 if you click on the radio input you might notice that the two inputs can be selected at the same time right as you can see so what this means is that the user can select for a single question the user can select true and false at the same time but that's not how we want it we want it such that the user can only select one at a time so for an answer to each question you can either select true or you can select false you cannot select both true and false at the same time so we want to group the input together such that only one input from a pair can be selected at a time okay so the way we do that is to use the name attribute so we can say first question and we can give the same name attribute to the second one now let's test let, let's test it out okay so now as you can see if i click true and i go ahead and click false it deselects true right which means i cannot select both of them at the same time i only have to select just one okay so let's do the same thing for the second set we'll give it a name attribute with a value let's say second question and let's do the same for this one okay so now this one is also working great so we can move on now okay so to prevent 
uh, unnecessary repetition, we want to target the before pseudo element of the P element and give it a content property of question with this hash here. Okay, so let's say um, so we'll say P bring the colon then we'll say before okay then we'll say content and we'll give it a value of question and then hash okay so as you can see now whatever value we give to the content appears in our screen so for example if i were to give this a value of hello then you see that it says hello one and then hello two so if i should give it a value of question with a hash then it shows us question one and then question two so whatever we put here will come before the element that we selected in this case the p element so before any p element you see that this appears okay so for example let's go to our html and let's just add let's add another p element here okay and let's say let's just say three as you can see we have question three okay yeah so that was just for demonstration purpose i'll just take it away and let's continue with building our quiz app so the final session of this quiz will contain a drop down and a text box so we want to begin by first nesting a div with a class of form rule so we want a div this div is going to have a class. The value of the class is going to be form row. And then we'll next four div element inside of it. So inside of this div, we nest four more div elements. So the first one, let's say div. And we want to alternate their class attributes with caution block and answer so we we'll just say def the first one will be class and have an attribute class attribute with the value question block so i'll just copy this and paste it And I'll change this one from question block to answer block. Now, let me just copy this one here. Yeah, so now we have four div elements. Okay, so the first and third div elements has the class value with the attributes of question block. And then for the second and fourth div element, they have the class attribute with the value of answer block also we want question block and answer so not answer block just answer okay all right so within the diff question block element we want to next one label element so this is the question block we want to nest one label element okay and then we want to add a css related question to the label text okay so i'll just say what is the full meaning of css Okay, so I'll just copy this 
and paste it in the second question block and I'll say what is CSS used for all right Okay, so next up, what we want to do is within the first div answer, we want to nest one required select element with three options. So I uh, want to have a select element. Okay, and within the select element, we want to have three options. So I'll just copy this and then let me paste it like so. Now we want to give the first option element a value of um, this. Okay, so I want to give it a value of this here and then the text select an option. So I'll just say select an option. Now let's give it a value of uh, <coughs> an empty string. And then for the second one, I want to give it a value of yes with the text yes. So value is going to be yes. The text is going to be yes. For the third one, the value is going to be no. The text is going to be no. <clears throat> okay, you should give the first option element a text content of select an option um, is there a spelling mistake oh yeah spelling mistake select an option not select an option you should give the select an attribute of required okay so let's give it an attribute of required <coughs> All right, so for step 38, you want to link the first label element to the select element and give the select element a name attribute. So this is the first label element and we want to link it to the select element. Okay. So and give the select element a name attribute so we say for and we say let's give this one a name attributes so let me just say css question let me also say css question here you should give the select element an id attribute okay so instead of name let's give it an id okay okay so we also need a name so name css question all right for step 39 Next one text area element within the second div answer. So this is our second div answer. I want to next one text area element. So we just say text area like so. Okay. And then we want to give the text area placeholder text describing an example answer. Okay, so we we'll just give it placeholder. We we'll just say 
place your question here. Oh, wait. And set the number of rows and columns it has. Okay, all right. So let's do, I'll do rows. Uh, let's say, how many? Three or five? Uh, I think three is okay. And then we'll give it columns. With the columns, maybe we can do uh, 30. Yeah, that's fine. All right, then for 40, as with the other input and label elements, what we want to do is we want to link the text area to its corresponding label element. Okay, so this is the text area and this is the label element. So we want to link the text area to the corresponding label element. So we say, four attributes and then give it a value of let's say questions and then we'll say id give it a value of questions then we can give it a name attribute let's give it a value of questions all right so that will be it for this particular one and then we can continue the next one where we look specifically at steps 51 all the way to steps 50. Sorry, steps 41 all the way to steps 50. All right, so see you in the next one.